know you're doing what you need to be doing, and you got beat. That happens, you know, on to the next. And I think that's how you have to be if you're at, at, at like any level of competitive sport. We have John on the line. Hi, John. Hey, show hey, Bulldog. Thanks for the show. Um, this is a good conversation. Um, when it comes to like being patient, um, and like showing impatience at the time of the morning show, I can sort of agree because I, I mean, the Buffalo Bills have the second best quarterback in football, in Josh Allen, and overall a great roster. Uh, so it just seems inevitable that we will eventually win the Super Bowl with this core. But then again, I could, uh, I'm too young to remember the Super Bowl years, but I can imagine this is what Buffalo was like in the early 90s. And they get four straight Super Bowls, and they couldn't win at least one with Jim Kelly and all those Hall of Famers. So my question to you is, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can answer it, is do you think Marv Levy should have been fired in the 90s for not winning at least one Super Bowl? I never did. I didn't then, and I wouldn't no. say so now. Yeah. No. no. Same. It's close enough to to a yeah. it's a reasonable comparison, right? Like any situation like that where your team is close but doesn't get there for a period of years. But no. And look, like you don't know what happens. Maybe you. It's just I get frustrated. Like it's it, it's there's a cause and effect determination made that might not even be accurate. Might have, might not even be true. Somebody else is the coach and they win. Like. Gruden, you know, taking over for Dungy on a Tampa team that Dungy, like, helped built. Right. And Gruden takes over. What's John Gruden's reputation in football for offense? And they have the best defense in the league and dominate and crush. Like, what does that say? What does that necessarily say about John and Gruden? What, and what do you know that he did differently that Dungy couldn't have done? Like, if Dungy had stayed right in that same spot, maybe they win anyway. Yeah. So, I mean... I don't know. Like I, I, I don't think this is a, b- a bad thing at all to feel like if you've got a team like this team or like those and you're really good every year, you just hang on for as long as you can. And I think changing at the top is the kind of thing that maybe a madman would do. Doesn't mean it can't work. Mm-hmm. But I think you just sort of try to keep as mu- keep it as much together as you can for as long as possible. That's what I think about this, and that's what I think about that team. I don't know if I thought this way 30 years ago, but I oh, never I, I never did. got with, like, changing coaches. That no, I, I, no. I mean, I was lucky enough to be on the radio at the tail end of Marv, and I was heartbroken when he had to leave. I mean, recognizing that, you know, the change is inevitable, and he had a, 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 you know, a long tenure and a very successful tenure. Um, I never got to a place – uh, where I thought that like, they need to make a switch here. That's why we keep losing. Um, you know, and, and everybody's different. Like some some people get completely bogged down in not seeing their team win, and so therefore you sort of become I don't know fatigued by it, fatalistic about it. Of course, of course, we're not gonna. I was never like that. Like I, I every four Super Bowls in a row, I thought the Bills were gonna win. You did going in, even the last one, like the fourth. By the fourth one, it's almost more just like, come on, <laughs> like no, there's no way a team, a team this talented, is going to lose this game for the fourth time in a row. Come on, of course not. And then they did. <laughs> but I, I would have been the same if they went back for a fifth and a sixth. That, that's just how I am. You know, the Sabers get to Game Seven against Philadelphia in 2011, and I'm I'm writing for the website like, just give us one guy, just just some success in this spot, so that I'm not surrounded by people who assume it's going to burst into flames, because it always does, and then it does, and the, but I still always get back to like the they can do it. I don't feel like that's been the sound of the fan base with this Bills team in recent years. I mean, of course there are people who are going to tell you, oh, they're just going to lose. You know, I know some of them, but I, I feel like the vibe has been super positive and confident. And I, I bet that stadium, you're not saying different, but you're talking no. about the past. Yeah. Or the Sabres. Like, that, that stadium for that Bengal game was not, you know, worried <laughs> that day. I, I think, yeah, if anything, maybe it was overconfident. Maybe. Maybe. 
Plus, they got their, well, what the image of the Bills is, they got their weather right. and at, at home, right, and still, still lost. Well, thanks, John. The Super Bowls, so um, I'm sure 1990, I would have been 18 for that game, or 19, and I would have just not been assuming, but I'm sure I was very confident in their chances. I felt like, you know, everybody did. When the Giants beat San Francisco, it was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. The Bills were really never necessarily seen as better than San Francisco, but the Giants, I mean, they'd just beaten the Giants too. Like, right. come on. And they'd gotten Kelly back, and the Giants didn't get Sims back. So just, ugh. Um, classic game. 91, they were an underdog. And I, I even back then, I would have respected that. But with the the Denver game in the AFC Championship being really hard for them, I'm sure I felt, and I can only say I'm sure I felt, because I don't exactly remember. Mm -hmm. It was hard to. Uh, probably concerned. And Washington was so great that year, you know, but d d didn't at all sort of – I wasn't scared for the Bills. Just mm -hmm. probably didn't right. assume they would win. Dallas, I remember specifically – I'm working by then. I'm working at the Democrat and Chronicle by then, and I had a, an assistant editor there named Wally Rugg. What a great name. Somebody listening remembers Wally Rugg. Hopefully he's still out there and killing it. But he, this was a, like a funny guy from Texas, and we're watching – Dallas beat San Francisco, that NFC championship, from the newsroom, and the Bills had already beaten Miami on the road that day. And that was a good thing, it seemed to me, that, again, they don't have to play the 49ers, mm -hmm. and they get a young Dallas team, and he, I think he was a, maybe a Dallas fan, but still, like he was like, watch out. <laughs> like, yeah. th th right. this team is better than yours. His, my yeah. team is better than yours, and they definitely were. And then by the fourth one, I mean, I just, it, it, I, I didn't have the emotional, I, I wasn't secure enough to invest in the possibility of the Bills winning in, in Atlanta. I just, you know what, I'm just going to expect them to lose. If they don't, great. But I was just not. That same Dallas team, Dallas was better in 93 than in 92. Yeah. Like, come on. But, you know, they gave them a game. Yeah, my, my, my analysis didn't go that deep. It really, <laughs> my, 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 I, I remember. I can remember t talking to p coworkers, people at the counter at the, at the, at the Santoras that I was working at then. Like, like, come on, of course they can do it. It's time. It's time. It's their time. <laughs> Nobody loses four of these in a row. Come on. Right. That was my analysis. I wasn't into how good Norton was at inside linebacker or anything. It was just like, come on. they got to be able to do it. Nobody loses this game four times in a row, so therefore they'll win. Right. <laughs> it's simple logic. That's how I'm sure that's how Vetus Garolitis looked at his 19th <laughs> match against Jimmy Connors, which he won. After See? which he said, nobody beats Venus Garolitis 19 times in a row. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> I think the number's right. It's 18 or 19. <laughs> Something like that. That's great. Mike Schoep and the Bull 